unless we harness the potential of every American and ensure that their skills match up to the work of the future. We cannot sustain. Oops. Was that my. Uh... Oh, goodness. That's all right. All of you know who I am. Last month, protesters took to the streets across the country to demand their universal rights and a government that is accountable to them and responsive to their aspirations. But they were met with an iron fist. Freedom of assembly, freedom of expression, and freedom of the press. Come here. Do you want to get arrested or no? Our pillars of an open and inclusive society. <laughs> There is a clear responsibility by the Egyptian government to hold accountable those responsible for these attacks. <laughs> sought nothing more than to exercise their universal rights. We call upon the Iranian government to abide by the international obligations that it has to respect the rights of its own people. We call for the immediate release of all who have been unjustly detained. And I'm confident that history will be on the side of those who seek justice. Protestants and Catholics will be able to join hands and sing in the words of the old Negro spiritual. I'm not moving. I'm not moving. And I'm not moving. I'm a law student at George Washington University. And I'm not moving. I will go to jail tonight because it's not right. We are against violence and we would call to account the Iranian government that is once again using its security forces and resorting to violence to prevent the free expression of ideas from their own people. Instead of respecting the rights of his own people, Gaddafi chose the path of brutal suppression. 
Innocent civilians were imprisoned. I have not been read my rights. I have not been told by a big tape. We want to know the people who are in there. We want to know all their names, what they're being charged with. And in some cases, beaten. You can't breathe, officer. Please get off the neck. I need my inhaler. A campaign of intimidation and repression began. It is the responsibility of the government of Libya to respect the universal rights of their own people, including their right to free expression and assembly. What's his badge number? What is his badge number? Demonstrators have been beaten, attacked. It is absolutely clear that the Syrian government is running out of time. Each new depiction of the abuses of the police on the First Amendment, the more people will show up here in New York City, and the more waves of occupation will spread across this country. What is absolutely clear is that we are witnessing history unfold. It's a moment of transformation that's taking place because the people of Egypt are calling for change. They've turned out in extraordinary numbers representing all ages and all walks of life. But it's young people who've been at the forefront. A new generation, your generation, who want their voices to be heard. What they're doing is essentially tyrannical. What, you're tolerant of the protesters? This is not a permission granted by some kind of overlord for the First Amendment. You know, we're talking whether or not the, you know, even the public agrees or disagrees, citizens in the United States have the right to peaceable assembly. So we don't need permission from the U.S. government or from any law enforcement official to peaceably assemble to address government with our grievances. What do you think is going to happen on Thursday? We were hearing reports that there will be a mass uh, march then. Um, I think that, that this continued br brutality on the part of the cops, especially coming at 2 a.m., you know, not al even arresting you know, members of the press, not allowing any of the press to, to film what was going on, I think that it's essentially going to create a more dissent in this country. Because this is not an ideological protest. This is a protest that is based on people actually experiencing the consequences of a government that preys on the resources and the spirits of citizens. You can't arrest an idea. You know, Occupy, to me, individually, is the civic square in America, and I doubt Americans are going to continue to allow our civic square to be taken from us. It belongs to the citizens. Everybody knows it. Contrary to what some folks say, that we're not Greece, yeah, we're not uh, Portugal. But the day finally came when the 99% said enough, enough is, is enough. enough. We will no longer support a system that is designed for us to fail. We will no longer be oppressed and disconnected from each other. It doesn't matter what your race or religion is. We are all now a community. We represent people from all walks of life, from the elderly who have witnessed the transformation to the young children who have inherited this world throughout every race, every religion, and every part of this planet. People are finally standing up and saying our voice Voices will be heard. We will no longer be silenced by the sounds of your gunshots. We will no longer burn our skin from the drips of your melting flags. We will no longer be ignored. We will no longer be controlled. You can capture our bodies, but you can't handcuff our souls. Thousands of people flooded the streets all around the world. And like a tsunami of consciousness, a shift happened. All of us started realizing that there must be a better way. We were designed to be so much more than this so when they tell you that it's impossible you show them with your action when they beat you and mistreat you you show them your compassion and then you march on against this monetary system that was designed to be a prison you march on because the present dictates the future march on for the billions who have given up their lives for the cause we carry their spirits with us so march on for the millions of children who are crying tonight because they just want something to eat while the rich are eating the hearts of the poor and drinking oil
feel like wine, we will march on. We speak for all the silenced voices. We speak for those who never have choices. We march on because the whole world is watching. And what we do now will echo into future generations. It is up to us what we do with our time and how we choose to live our lives. We will not give up our freedom for your corporate lies. Your illusionary power is as temporary as your life is. So what have you contributed to this world? Today I declare the tides have shifted. Our visions are coming true and the world is uniting as one. We are the children of the future and our time has finally come to create a world of compassion, a world based on love, a world based on peace.